Mike is looking sad. What's happening, Mike? Uh, yeah. We are measuring some open circuits in our current switch module, which is the one potted module we have other than the uh, memory module. And you confirm there are two of the circuits that don't work? Yeah, there's two open circuits from what we have tested so far. We haven't tested all the pins. Uh, yeah. But uh, on the the set lines for the course, uh, there's two open circuits. And and you have a you have a, call it a conspiracy theory of why you think that might have happened, which makes a lot of sense. Yes, we should have a dash 011 current switch module, but we have a dash 021. And the fact that it's the only module that is potted, other than uh -huh. the erasable memory, uh, it it makes me think that this may have been swapped out. Uh, because this module wasn't working, they may have taken the working one from our AGC back in the day and replaced it with this one that wasn't working. Right. Which came from, you know, who knows where. <laughs> and it's spotted. It is spotted. But it's not as bad as the core memory. No. So the, no. the core memory, they just forget it, right? Mm -hmm. yes. Way too small. So the core used in this one is way bigger. Oh, you have a picture. Excellent. So this is what it looks inside when it's not potted. There's a chance that we can actually though it's, it's large enough that we could yes. potentially repair it. Uh, but we have to remove the epoxy, okay? Polyurethane foam. Polyurethane. Okay, fellows, this is probably the scariest thing we have done to date, but um, there is no other way than going into the module and we're going to try to mill it first and then uh, it seems to be softer once we're inside and see if we continue mechanically or chemically. Here we go! So far we're 50 mils in and I just like it. There are bubbles in it. It looks somewhat porous. Uh, it's still, it's still harder, harder, than, than harder than we'd like, but yeah. it's not as hard as the top. Right. Yeah, it looks pretty solid. We have just hit some wires, so now it's time for decision whether I mill around them. <laughs> or whether we try acetone and see how it goes. The surface was pretty acetone resistant. Right. Like, I'm it, not expecting it to to melt away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. melt away. Right. Uh, <laughs> so yes, anything we do mechanically is going to be way more effective. So this looks scary, but it's actually the more the more controlled way we could do it, and it's coming out well as good as we could have hoped for. It separates very well from the components, so we think we can dig it out. It is really archaeology. This is what I'm doing here. I'm <laughs> hammer and a little uh, chisel here, and I'm unearthing it progressively, but it's going very well. Particularly since I know exactly where I'm going, we should get to our parts and be able to test it pretty soon. So the excavation is complete. We successfully removed the uh, potting and in no small part because uh, Mike had the foresight to take a picture of another module at the CHM, on the AGC at the CHM and I, could, I knew exactly where every wire was so I could just, it was excavating a dinosaur but you know where the bones lay and I was able to you know, see them and knew how they were. I can now hand it over to Carl and Mike, and you're going to tell us what the fault is. We will, we will do our best. All right. Ready, Mike? Mm -hmm. Off you go. Yep, okay. And so I can touch the lead of the diode here. And it's beeping. Right. It's either the diode or the connection. Or the connection on the, the other side. Yeah. And we can't tell until I go. Yes. <laughs> yes. 
side. We, we don't have to open as wide of a window right. on the other right. side. Right. Right. <laughs> I, I do prefer that we open a wide window because yeah. it, it makes the repair much, much yeah. easier. So my thinks it's this diode. Well, we don't know yet till we open the other side, but we're pretty sure. It's the yeah, but that would make perfect sense, right? Overcurrent in the diode. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Especially since these, these diodes uh, right. are getting high current. It's a 30 volt, 70 nanoseconds, so it's not the fastest in the world. 40 milli 400, 400 milliamp. And what's the forward voltage? 8.5, so we can take a, a regular. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's point, point 0.85 volts, so silicon diodes, not shot key. Yeah, I'll, I'll see if I can find a manufacturer and part number. Sometimes for these things I can find them. So we have completed our archaeological dig of the current module B11. And uh, we have found the faulty components. Um, it turns out to be two diodes. And this one comes out here, CR16, CR16. and the schematics are in red. And then we had a second fault, uh, which is CR11 over here. Mm -hmm. And since this is cordwood construction, the diode is in a hole with the, the lead poking on either side. So we had to dig from the other side and it's coming out here. And here, since we knew where the fault was, we made smaller windows for these, but still big enough so we can uh, do a clean repair. We also know what diodes that is, right? You, you figured out in the documentation, yep. you found the equivalent, and it's uh, 1N... 1N914B. Which is actually a very popular diode to this day. Right. 50 years later, you can still buy it, uh, so anchor our favorite. <laughs> Silicon Valley Dive for components has it, so we're going to have lunch near to Anchor and buy uh, the exact replacement and put it in there. Mm -hmm. After the demise of Weird Stuff and Halted, Anchor Electronics is about the only place left in Silicon Valley that carries vintage components. It has a definite 1970s feel inside. This is where you go when your old Sprite cap has gone bad. Plus, things are sorted out and prices are very reasonable. Sure enough, we found a whole bunch of our old diodes. And from Anchor Electronics, a local die for our old new components. 151N916B for the price of $1. So I'm about to uh, take the diode, out of the DC's diode out of the module and I'll do that under the microscope. This one. Okay. Snip. <coughs> Clip. And you can see here I, I cut the lead very cleanly. And I have now cut through the plastic screen to get at the diode itself and in the white material you see is a very soft I'm told it's uh, some you know, rubber silicone uh, so you might be able to pull the diode out of there intact maybe and one diode out and the second diode out and here's the diode. We um, might put it on eBay for anyone that wants to buy to support the project. And it's guaranteed not to work. There you go. Does it look like a diode? 0.550. Yeah. And this is a, this is an original diode there. Point. So it's point five three two. Okay. So I repaired one. And then right let's one. do the other one. The other one is one. There you go. There it is. Just reverse it. Right direction. I have to say this is quite an amazing repair. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. Thank you. Only two and a half days.
I'm going through each of the uh, switching cores in the current switch module and flipping them both directions and making sure that they respond as expected. So that, that's a further test of the module we repaired. So mm -hmm. it, it failed in DC tests. Yep. Now it passes DC tests and now we're trying to dynamic tests to see if we actually repaired it. It's a little bit of an archaic circuit that has a big core to retain one bit. It's a much larger core than the core memory. We have it somewhere. I, oh, there it is. These one, right, uh, Mike? They're, those are even bigger. The, the these, those are a little bit bigger than these, yeah. uh, but they're, they're similar. Right, so, and uh, they are used to drive pulses in the address drivers. And so far, so good. So I can do a uh, pulse of just the set line for the core. Okay. And you saw the first time it's set, subsequent times it's oh, not set Oh, it's, it's, it's like core memory, but b with better signals. Yep, and then so let me do a pulse on both of them. So we get pulses in both directions. So there's yep. the read cycle, then the write cycle. Mm -hmm. And then there's a reset for the whole thing. I got it. All right. So we are now up to the one we think we fixed. Mm -hmm. We change the diode. Okay. Is that is that the result yet, or is that the nope. previous one? That's previous test. Okay. So let Move me for power it. up. Current looks good, and pulse. It looks good to me. And we're up to the test of the second mm -hmm. repair. Uh, hold on, I need to focus a bit. Go for it, Mike. We got a core. Alright, so you flip one way, flip the other way. Mm -hmm. So, our, at least that worked. Alright, excellent. We repaired it. And everything was going honky dory with the uh, active testing of the module until we found a short circuit. Right. Ah. Uh, and is it related to the fault we had before, or is it something different? It seems entirely different. We successfully flipped the first four cores, showed them setting and resetting, uh, and and driving their transform or their uh, transistors. So when I s wired up for the fifth core and powered on the module, it drew a lot more current than I was expecting. So I turned it off right away, <laughs> and I uh, started trying to figure out what the cause of it was. And it turns out that we have a reset line that runs in through one pin, through coils on four cores, and out another pin. And somehow, somewhere, this is shorted to the right selection pin. Uh, for right now, which would uh, should have nothing in common with yeah. it. Yeah, and the 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 fault is happening right about here. Yeah, so it's not one that we could have caused with our repair. Yep. Yeah. So, right at about least we think there. So it, it's reasonably far away from our um, our digging site. We're seeing about four. Dang! Hours. So there's <laughs> maybe like. More than two faults in this module, we repaired two, there's still one, at least one over there. Gee wee, what did they do with that module? I have no idea.